But I, I think it's important that we continue on because in every effort where you try and change the mind of government, until you do that, until the day they announce the decision that they've listened, it seems like they're not going to listen. And it's why we have to keep the pressure on. Why I am prepared to join with the Premier and with the leader of the Green Party, I think whose letter is going to be read here today, and with John Cummins, with federal politicians and with people in the community to go to Ottawa together. Why don't we go to Ottawa together and deliver a message together? One voice, not many voices, one voice of many people saying that the Kitsilano Coast Guard Station can be kept open. You know what goes on. You look out, uh, out here today and you see what goes on. You see what goes on every day in our waters. I don't need to convince you on the issue. We have made the case, but we have to make it louder. We have to continue to make the case for change here. I believe we can succeed. And let's say with one voice to the federal government, change your mind. And if you change your mind, we will praise you. It is sometimes difficult to do when you make a decision, to back down from that decision when it, it turns out to be wrong. But if they do that, if the Prime Minister does that, if the Minister does that, we're not going to say, taunt them and say, you changed your mind. You're going to say that you came to your senses and listened to the people of this country, and I will be the first to praise them. So let's come together. I invite all of our parties and all of our people to continue this effort because it's getting down to the end. They seem to be moving forward the date of closure and we have to make our voice heard once again. So I ask for your support and to join with us, all parties in British Columbia, but more important than parties, all people in British Columbia to say, this doesn't make sense. Let's stand up and say no to the closure of the Kitsilano Coast Guard Station and ask the federal government to change its mind and listen to the people. Thank you very much. Thank you all for coming today. Uh, the, the issue before us is a, is a significant issue. Uh, these waters out here in the Straits of Georgia are some of the busiest waterways in Canada. Um, as we uh, know, the men and women of the Coast Guard have done just an outstanding job for us over the years in protecting uh, the lives of people who either make their livings on the water or who are enjoying uh, the waterways uh, as, a, as a means of pleasure. Um, the closure of the Kitsilano Coast Guard base is simply unacceptable. But the points have been made, and I won't reiterate, that the Coast Guard is held in high regard, not just by citizens of British Columbia, but across the country for their unwavering dedication to public safety. And they need and deserve the tools and funds to do that essential life-saving work. And we all agree on that. And we're here for, and that goes back to why we're all here. It's the right decision, and it's what the people of British Columbia that we work to represent have made it clear that they want. I hope you will take the time to watch uh, the statement that Premier, the Premier Christy Clark released on YouTube where she reiterates these points and Minister Shirley Bond also reiterates that we will continue to make your wishes known to the federal government and continue to fight for the funds to be found to continue to ensure life, limb, and boating and uh, water user safety in the province. Thank you. If the federal government had consulted with the experts, with the province, with the uh, municipality, with the Parks Board, with uh, even uh, us in the opposition, uh, other members of parliament, there would have been an obvious, overwhelming uh, response that said, this is not a good decision to close this station in the busiest port in Canada. It, it's absolutely ludicrous. And I don't know what it's going to take for the federal government to hear how outraged the people on the West Coast feel about, and in Vancouver, feel about this decision. Because it needs to be reversed. Since this reckless decision by the Harper Conservative government was announced, Liberals have been voicing our opposition to the proposed shuttering of the Kitsilano Search and Rescue Station. This station is the front line for safety on the waters of British Columbia's low mainland and is the focal point for safety for Canada's busiest marine port. If this service is gone, response times will increase significantly and Canadian lives will be put at risk. This is a dangerous disregard for the people of coastal communities, for their safety and their way of life. I 
I wanted to add my comments to this. Like Finns, the day this was announced, we were all in an uproar. We got up and we spoke against it and we put all the positions forward. I've asked questions in the House of Commons. I have tabled almost 2,100 signatures from people here in Vancouver Center and in the Lower Mainland petitioning the government to stop the closure. I have made speeches in the House of Commons. I have had no response. It is as if I am speaking to thin air. And when you ask questions, you get absolutely no answer, but no word. It will not compromise safety. You know, I trust us. We know, even when, as you heard from, from John, internal reports say that this is a risky thing to do. It's sort of, you know, people talking about banging your head against the, you know, talking to thin air. I was like banging my head against the wall sometimes. It's such a ridiculous thing, disclosure. And certainly, you know, you know, we've not had a word. And the word consultation, usually that comes when you have someone to inform you that something's going to happen. We didn't even get that. I think we found out, like all of you did, on the radio, on News 1130 or CKNW or CBC. That's when we found out. We were totally blindsided by it all. And although, many, although you know, sometimes politicians, you know, you listen to us, we have to be a little bit uh, diplomatic in dealing with senior levels of government. After all, yeah, we do need some infrastructure money every now and then. Um, you know, people like me don't have to be. Significant concerns have been expressed in letters to the Prime Minister from both John McKierney, Vancouver's uh, of the Vancouver Fire Department, and the Chief Constable Jim, Clu, uh, Jim Chu of the Vancouver Police Department. And these letters, I will add, have not been answered yet. Nor has our letters, nor our motions in council. Not a single word. I hope the federal government will reverse the decision to act to safeguard Vancouver's harbor by keeping the Coast Guard base open. And he thanks everyone here who came out to rally to show your support. Now that's the diplomatic message from the mayor. And as I said, I don't have to be. I'm saying, where are those four EMTs? Are anyone here? No. No. You were invited. Not a single one showed up. No guts. Shame. Absolutely not. Shame. You know, the other day, Shame. the other day I was at an event and Alice Wong showed up. And it was in the downtown east side. And uh, they showed up, you know, we were announcing uh, some sort of uh, a little bit of money they put towards uh, helping us out in the downtown east side. But you know how many staffers she brought with her? Three. Three staffers. And you know what one staffer did? Make way, everybody. Make way. That's all the staffer did. I was absolutely appalled. In fact, I even said to her, let's get rid of these three guys and hire somebody who's going to do something useful, like Coast Guard guys. I guess I just have, uh, you know, many people have talked about the various issues, and I won't repeat, repeat them, but I just have a couple of things to say to Stephen Harper. What I have to say to Stephen Harper is, really? You know, really? We could spend a billion dollars on security for the G20 to keep world leaders safe. It's important keeping world leaders safe, but we're important too. And we can't spend $700,000 to help keep the people on this coast safe? Really? We could spend $45 billion on fighter jets, and whether you believe in that or not is a, is a good debate to have, but we can spend $45 billion on that? and we can't spend $700,000 for this precious, beautiful resource that is a jewel for British Columbia, for Canada, and for the world? It's unbelievable. This is such an important issue. We need to be very loud on it. We need to uh, push the boundaries on this issue as we did when we occupied the Coast Guard station. So we need to think about some, frankly, direct action. And you know that Jim and I and members of BC Fed will be there with you in that direct action. Thank you very much.